So what, but, but as somebody who cares about truth, yes. use the deer example, because that's, sure. that's as black and white as they come. So look, what I, do you I, think of that? But let me, let, let me, hold on. Go ahead. But, I, I want to make my own argument You here. can. But, you get to do I mean, it all day. I get to do it now. There's lies on here, both sides. It's like unbelievable. In her Twitter account, and lie right. for a okay, Vice President Harris put stuff out about Trump that are absolutely Total completely lies. false. Like, so for example, he's going to sign a federal abortion ban. Okay, Trump's not going to sign a federal abortion ban. He's in bold letters, capital letters. He said it publicly. He's posted it. Otherwise, I can give you multiple examples. Just take a look at her Twitter feed, her X feed. It's a series of lies about President Trump. Today, we're going to see Bill Ackman, a business CEO, pretty calmly and pretty logically, not all hyped up and crazy, stand up for the logic of President Trump as president from a business perspective. He's going to break down and go after... Mr. Liberal rule follower, do what my bosses want me to do, analyst over here who's going to try to pin him in a corner, even though his logic reverses back on Kamala Harris as well. And surprisingly, one of the hosts on here, maybe it's a well-known thing, but he on CNBC is going to list some of the negatives of Kamala Harris. It's Sean Daniel here. If you guys enjoy the videos, consider subscribing. And let's get into this more measured, serious video today. You think that there are, we were, had, you've heard about our earlier discussion, do you think it's, there are CEOs that are afraid to come out for Kamala Harris because of retribution from the Trump, or vice versa? I, I, it, I, is it harder to come out for Trump or harder to come out? I think it's a no brand. I, I, I could go to every book party in New York and cocktail party if I, if I uh, and the mainstream media would love me and Joe Kerner would be great if I were to endorse <laughs> Kamala Harris. You're correct. So, with Trump, by the way, been, one of the it's benefits an absolute of, of, nightmare for you. One of the benefits supporting Trump, the, one of the few benefits supporting Trump publicly, is many, many people come up to me, uh, CEOs, uh, and say, "I'd like to support Trump, but I." Bill, can't. thank you for saying what you're saying. I yeah. wish I were similarly situated where I could, but I, I have. You know, all my employees would quit. You know, I, I hear stuff like that. Well, if you read 20 things that Kamala Harris has said in the past, it's all anathema to business to business and to free markets and to the filibuster and to the rule of law and to the border and they're all afraid to even say well she didn't mean any of it joe you're you're preaching to the converted i know and uh look i think i think we should tone down the emotion uh i think it's a really important decision uh if you want to make the decision on economics or the stock market you should feel free to do so uh if you want to make the decision on the basis of uh Character. national security um if you just I mean, the people who, by the way, I've had many, many people who, who continue to support uh, Vice President Harris who say to me, you know what, Bill, I agree with basically every one of your concerns, right. but I just don't like the guy. Right. I think Orange he's rude. Bad. I think but he's it's not crass. Uh, Those people are just babies. They don't know how to be mature. Wouldn't you rather have someone, like, I can't stand dealing with the politically correct, super liberal highly college educated focused person who has the perfect term all the time and you can't just talk to him for real those are those people that are like oh my god i can't stand donald trump i don't know why i did a european accent right there um i don't like his style i hate him um that's I, that's right. a meaningful percentage of people and then there are the people who say okay the world's going to end democracy is over he's going to become a dictator uh at 82 at the end of his term he's going to you know he's now stalin and there are some meaningful, thoughtful people who this is what they believe in. By the way, I respect them. By the way, no way do I respect any of those people because that, in that category, I do not respect people. If they can't see that truth, they are so blinded. Nah. I would argue those people fear the risk of that. Yeah. I don't think anyone thinks that that risk exists with Kamala Harris. Do you, you agree with that? Oh I don't think the God. risk. You think there's no risk. I think the risk. I think the system. Go you're, ahead. Your risk assessor. Can I just ask you about? The, Please. We've talked to a lot of people this week who, are, or over the last week and a half, we've heard from a lot of people who are major investors, and they're betting one way or another on this. Are you mm -hmm. making bets based on what you think is going to happen with the election, and and and, and where would you put those bets? Uh, so, we I have no we have no bets in the portfolio on the basis of who's going to be president. Um, I you know I uh, we don't short stocks anymore, as you know. Right. We own these great American uh, businesses, uh, obviously in a better economy. Uh, let's talk, you know, it's a CNBC. Let's talk a little bit about the economics of the next candidate. I mean, Trump is the only candidate that's talked about accelerating the growth of the country. And the only way we're going to dig ourselves out of $36 trillion worth of liabilities 
is through growth, right? There's sort of two answers when you're over leveraged, right? Uh, one answer is you can negotiate with your lenders. The other is you can increase the value of your assets. Um, and, and, and how do you do that? You increase the, your profitability. How do you increase your profitability? You reduce expenses. He's the only candidate. Yeah, only candidate because she wants to raise taxes, she says. She says it's a complicated issue when you ask her about the technicalities about how she wants to raise taxes. But she says she wants to raise them for the wealthy, that they make sure they pay their fair share. Trump talks about doing tax cuts. She talks about giving out free forgivable loans to African-American business owners. She's putting on more expense to just give people free crap versus Trump is trying to take away from the stuff that we take from people with tax cuts so we can have more stuff in our pocket. And he's trying to bring more businesses back to the states. And he would stop a lot of illegal, uh, taxpayer money going to illegals, which would then give the government more money or give the government more money to then uh, utilize in other ways that helps us. If you keep giving money to illegals, how does that help us? For a moment, because it's not really Trump versus Harris. It's the Trump team versus the Harris team, right? So what have we seen? So Trump's picked J.D. Vance as his vice president. Uh, 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 <laughs> I don't I'm afraid of mispronouncing no, 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 it's just, Kamala, Kamala has picked, oh, well, yeah. uh, uh, has picked uh, uh, Waltz. Waltz is a self-described knucklehead, right? I can't imagine a world in which this guy is president of the United States. And you have to look crazy? at the vice president as a potential president of the United States. So that's if I, if I line them up, you know, you've got a guy who grew up in a very, very challenged uh, environment, addiction, family, uh, rural America, makes his way to Yale, armed forces, now he's, you know, venture capitalist, right. senator, uh, extremely articulate, uh, obviously highly intelligent, so you compare and contrast. You have Elon Musk, who's probably the, you know, one of the most consequential, uh, certainly consequential right. business leaders 100%. in the world. Uh, it's proven he can take on... 12 things at you the same Mark, time and, got Mark Cuban. And, and change the world, okay, uh, as, right. you know, who's going to take, who put, really has put himself right. out here in this election, and first, the only one talking about uh, government efficiency, right, and Trump's all in. By the way, RFK, okay, okay. RFK is a highly here intelligent. This guy's chomping at the bit over here, trying to think of something to corner him in about <laughs> Why Trump's messed up? Look, look, look. He's just—he's person, and he's focused on a couple of issues that are mean a lot to me. Number one, uh, I—you know—the food industrial complex. What's happened right. to the health of Americans over the last couple of decades? He's going to focus on that. I think that is a critically important issue. I think examining examining the seventy-three shot regime that we right. give our kids and. And Can I it's, worth, you though, it's worth doing. You've spent your go. whole career talking about truth, honestly. Yes. You go Here out there go. publicly talking about companies that you think are lying. Sure. And I just want to know what you think when you see, for example, former President Trump publicly say on the record that he forced Deere to not move uh, to Mexico. And then this, the company has to come out with a statement that says that that's false, fundamentally false. He, he puts on Twitter or, or on social uh, uh, on, on, on his social media platform that uh, Jamie Dimon is endorsing him. And then J.P. Morgan has to come out publicly and say, that's not actually, true. Actually, my, that's not what happened. What happened was, my, but, what happened was Jamie said some positive things about Trump. Someone posted on Twitter that Jamie's endorsing him and Trump, in effect, okay. uh, retweeted. Let me ask you this, though. What, but, but as somebody who cares about truth, yes. use the deer example, because that's, sure. that's as black and white as they come. So look, what I, do you I, think of that? I think there are probably many examples of Trump convincing a, or convincing and or threatening a company that if they open up a factory in Mexico, that he's going to you know, tariff their goods or whatever, and maybe he confused the company. Okay, but he certainly has used that kind of do, technique. Do you but let me, let, let me, hold on. Go ahead. But, I, I want to make my own arguments You here. can. You but, get to do I mean, it all day. I get to do it now. lies on here, both here's, sides. It's like unbelievable. In her Twitter account. And lie from Okay, them. Vice President Harris put stuff out about Trump that are absolutely, Total completely lies. false. Like, so, for example, he's going to sign a federal abortion ban. Okay, Trump's not going to sign a federal abortion ban. He's in <laughs> bold letters, capital letters. He said it publicly. He's posted it. Otherwise, I can give you multiple examples. Just take a look at her Doesn't. Twitter feed her ex feed, it's a series of lies about President Trump. So, you know, she's not some, unfortunate. again, I, I look. The liberal guy is chomping at the bit and he would never, ever, ever freak out about all the lies that Kamala has spread. No, because his bosses probably, look at him, look at him, need him to try to pin this big business guy, Trump supporter, in a corner 
Has Trump lied about stuff? I am absolutely certain about that. Has Kamala Harris lied about stuff? I'm certain about that too, but that guy would never freak out about a Kamala lie like he does a Trump lie. To a world, uh, maybe it's four years from now, and we have two candidates, and it's November 5th again, and they, none of them have lied, none of them have personal issues. They're like right. the world's most incredible candidates, and it's so hard to decide because they're amazing. Human beings are flawed. Uh, Donald Trump is flawed. So, but Kamala lie, Harris is flawed. You they're just they lie, and it's the same. What about like eating uh, uh, eating pets? <laughs> okay. no, That's honestly, true. I, I know because okay. first of all, let's, we only got a couple minutes. Okay, left. let me focus. On, let's talk about what the issue. The issue is God. when you have oh, totally open borders. Okay, and you're flying twenty thousand uh, immigrants from one culture into a city of forty thousand people, and there isn't sufficient infrastructure, and they don't have driver's licenses, and they have different habits. And by the way. And maybe, you know, it wasn't uh, cats and dogs, but they were, you know, trapping geese in the pond or whatever, <laughs> whatever the, right. the ultimate uh, truth is. It's, it's the, there's a symbolic uh, element there. Sorry, guys. My PC was unplugged and we're having some little issues. And that, that cat thing is true. And the idea that they're never going to lie. You know, I know we have a bunch of Trump worshipers out there on social media and everywhere. And they're just like... People are so sold out to Trump that they don't see that he's said some not true stuff. And we have the same with Kamala Harris, but obviously Trump is way better and he's way more real and way more cool and way more logical, way more experienced with just handling people. And I just wanted to show you guys this more measured way that the CEO brings up something on CNBC uh, and actually has this guy. I don't know why this guy is so supportive. But he, you could hear right here, he's irritated <laughs> at this guy with his way of trying to pin this guy in a corner. If you guys enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. It's Sean Daniel, and I'll see you in the next one.